Hi all, this is the discussion for the week 8. I'm going to draw the TA for this course, one of the TA of this course, and uh, this discussion will be closely related to the homework 6, and uh, in this discussion we will talk about 5 questions. Uh, each of the each question would have more or less like some link to the homework questions. As I sometimes uh, like the note it, I sometimes note here. Like for example, for the question A, question one here, the LTR response to a periodical signal, and uh, the question here is related to the homework question one. The frequency response is also related to the question one in the homework. Uh, the question three is not directly related to the homework. Uh, it's about like the uh, given uh, a periodical, uh, I don't know, no, given uh, the Fourier transform of the xt, uh, given its x omega, how to deliver, how to like the derivative is the period and uh, somewhat like the some kind of like the applications of Fourier transform. The first question is the sampling, so it's related to the homework question. I guess it's homework question five. Q five. And the last question is modulation. It's related to the Q4, I think, in the homework. So, so let's just go back to question one. Uh, say that we have periodic signal. Say that we have periodic signal, and uh, when it is xt. Why is this is exp expressed by the exp exp exponential term? Why is expressed by the cosine term or sine term? How would it like the response to a certain like the uh, frequency response of y t? A uh, certain frequency response h j omega. So the first equation. Xt, when well, Xt is the expressed in the exponential term, the Yt is just the Hj omega zero multiplied with the Xt. We call it the eigenfunction of the Fourier transform, and you will learn it in the class. Or you already learned it in the class. And uh, and further furthermore, we can going forward we can express uh, this uh, into the form of the into expression of the amplitude and the phase. Second, uh, and here the additional property A saying that if x t is a cosine term, the output will be the h j omega zero. The amplitude of h omega zero multiplied with the cosine of the addition of this space. So, and uh, the equation one will be proved in the class. Here we prove we want. Uh, here we will prove like the equation two because we. We don't do the B because if we prove the like the property A, it's straightforward to prove prove the property B. Like, uh, I mean, for the one the xt equal to the sine. Okay, here we go. So, what in hand is that we have the equation one. And uh, so intuitively, 
we want to express the xt into the form of the exponential term because we know the equation one. Okay. From the Euler formula, this can be one over two e j omega zero t plus e minus j omega zero t. And y t is equal to. So and then we just substitute the like the formula one. Uh, into the uh, like the x t into the maybe for formula one, and we can get the y t equal to the t. Always be e j omega zero t plus the angle h j omega zero plus the h minus zero multiply with e j minus t. So we see that uh, there are two terms here. So for y t, the first term corresponds to the e j omega zero t. The second term corresponds to e minus j omega zero t. It's just like the substitute the omega with the omega zero and the minus omega zero respectively. And uh, here is another another condition is that. The xt is real. Uh, sorry, ht is real. ht is real. It means that the hj omega is a Hermitian. So, this is what we have learned in the last week. It both the homework and the lecture slides, right? Uh, and, uh, so we can draw the conclusion that, uh, if so, H J omega is Hermitian means that, as the amplitude of the H J omega is even, and the phase of the H J omega is odd. So going up forward, we can utilize the, this property to simplify the Y T. Uh, yeah, I will write the so the amplitude of G H J omega is even, and the phase of H J omega zero. Uh, you know, this is the old. Okay. And then we can get the yt is equal to... Because it's even, so we can have one just positive j omega zero. By amplitude. And we can have the j omega zero t plus h j and here and the, and the exponential term of corresponds to exponential term we can utilize the this property So phase is the uh, old, and so we can say that e j minus omega zero is the like the 
positive angle can also be is equal to the negative. Is equal to the negative j omega zero, and these two terms remains us of the. So this is we can express this as phi, and this is minus phi. So again, we can apply the like we can utilize the Euler's formula, like the, which combine with the one over two, so it will be. Hg omega zero multiply with the cosine omega zero t plus Hg omega zero. So here we successfully uh, prove the property A. Okay. Uh, that is, if we have the cosine omega t as an input, and uh, if the h t is real, and then we can get the y t in this kind of formu formulation. So we will leave the property b to you because it's straightforward. If you must the pro proving how to prove the a. Okay, next next we will talk about how to utilize these properties to solve the questions. Uh, related questions, namely when xt is a periodical, how can you, when xt is a periodical signal, how can you utilize the, uh, the above properties to help solve the questions? So we have uh, the question B asks that assume an uh, LTS system with the following impulse response, ht is uh, equal to the e exponential of minus t multiplied with ut and it asks you to com compute the output to the corresponding input okay so xt here is so the first xt is given that uh, with its period is this uh, t0 equal to 1 So uh, as, as according to the like the definition of the we know it's a Fourier series and according to the definition of the Fourier series series and we can say that xt is equal to the exponential I mean the summation of the exponential of E j Two pi kt and the oh sorry I ck in front and only two valid like ck for k equal to one and k equal to four all the other ck is equal to zero so it will only there was only two to form two terms so it's a, 2 pi t minus 1 over 2 j 8 pi t. So this is x t and uh, so we see that x t is uh, consisted by two exponential terms. It will remind us of the property, I think the property 1 above, right? And uh, let's derive the uh, like the frequency for the response of the system first. The ht uh, is a very uh, standard, like uh, very common expression, uh, very common uh, like the impulse response. It's for uh, 
transform is the word. And here we just need to apply the property one above and the yt is just uh, the so we write the xt here first multiply with j 2 pi so 2 pi is the omega omega 1 omega 1 and the Second term will be multiplied with h j h pi. So we can see that this is omega 2. And uh, just to substitute the 2 pi into the form of the h j omega. And the, then we can get the, the final, final expression of the h j omega. So I will not. Uh, Take time to get the final answer here and leave it to you. Okay, so this is uh, uh, for the first XT, which is given by the Fourier series. The second XT is uh, most, uh, more clear, like say it's uh, XT equal to the square of the cos of a cosine. So we first take a transform onto the this square and we see that as x t is equal to a cosine two t plus one and uh, is divided by two. So again it's uh the cosine two t here is periodical and uh, the I mean the the one one can be like the think of as like a exponential term with is uh, omega to be zero, right? That's exponential j omega zero t and omega zero could be zero. So it will be one. So here with the y t can be the I mean, I get the 1 over 2 in the front, and uh, that'll be 1 plus h0, and the cosine 2t multiply with the uh, cosine 2 Sorry. So here we will have like the, the cosine two. Sorry. The cosine two t is frequency is two, so obviously it will have f two here. Uh, here we apply the property. Property two above, because we have cosine. So if we have cosine 2t input into the system, it will give you the amplitude of uh, h2j multiplied with the cosine 2t plus the angle of h2j. So we can derive here that, uh, so we can come back to here, it will be amplitude of the h2 multiply with the cosine 2t plus the angle of h2. Uh, the last step is just to take the exact value inside and uh, calculate the final result. So again, I will leave it to you. Okay, so this is what we had for the first uh, Problem. The second problem is the frequency response. Here we just give a very simple example. So we have an input and output pair. We have the xt and the yt. 
and then we have another input x one t, and we want you to get to the output of the same LTS LTI system of this x one t. Uh, when we see the input output pair, uh, and uh, immediately we should uh, think that we need to find its frequency response. So the xt, I mean, it can lead to the xj, xj omega equal to maybe thinking another way. So we want to, to find the xj omega, right? And uh, it can be get by the division, like the yj omega divided by the xj omega. And the yj omega, I mean, th th this kind of flow transform is it's a very simple one. And uh, so this is a flow transform of yj. Yt and uh, for example, xt is this, and then it will lead to, to you the result that hj omega is 1 plus j omega divided by 2 plus j omega. And uh, next, we have x1 omega is equal to the 1 of oh, oh, j plus j omega. So to get its uh, output, we go through, we utilize the frequency. We calculate the frequency of y one t is equal to the h j omega multiplied with x one omega. And it will lead to the Term that it will become and the next step. I mean, next step is very simple just to come decompose the numerator uh, into like to decouple the denominator, the two terms in the in the denominator, and express the numerator in 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 terms of the denominator as and uh, it should be and. So this will lead to the result that y one t is equal to just to take the inverse version of of these two term minus t t plus two. So this is what we get for the y one t. Next is the asking you finding a d differential equation that describes describe the system. So uh, like the one we see the differential equations, we know that we want to have yt there. We also want to have xt there. But uh, we don't want to have the hd there, right? So we want to, we don't want to the hd there. So let's intuitively we want to, we would have the so uh I mean we can have j omega is equal to y j omega t x j omega and uh, from above we know that is. And uh, because we don't want the hg omega there, so here we play the game. In this part, in the right part, 
and we get that y2 j omega plus j omega so the next is just taking the Fourier transform of this uh, equation or maybe yeah so this is 2yt plus dtyt is equal to xt plus derivative of the xt. So mm, this procedure is uh, uh, according to the like the Fourier transform of the derivative or the inverse Fourier transform of the derivative. Okay, so and this is the differential equation we get. Okay, next is the question three. Question three is uh is that the Fourier transform of the xt is given, uh, like given below, and it's the sub question A in the question three ask you that uh, to ask you to determine if xt is periodic or signal. Okay, we can start with A. Uh, so we can do get the it's suitable to get straightforward to get the xt in terms of its x omega. Just to take a inverse Fourier transform. Of x omega and we can get. Uh, it's very interesting to find that this is So the xt can be can be expressed by all the can all be uh, expressed by the exponential terms, and we will save it for use uh, later on. And here, and here, like the we consider we see the, these two terms. The period of this term is two pi over the omega is four. The t one, the t two is two pi over five. Obviously, this t one and t two doesn't have a common period, so it's a periodic periodic signal. I mean, t is not periodic. Okay, question B is uh, what if we convolve the xt with the ht? Um, we take a look at onto the ht, we see that uh, it's actually a rectangle. You, when you, uh, we subtract the, we, the subtraction of these two step function will give you a rectangle and it's centered in one, uh, in two. And its width is four, so it's the t over two, and its band width is four. Or maybe uh, its width is its width is four. And we can get the. We take the. For chance of, of this, this rectangle, we can get to the hj omega is equal to the e four e minus j two omega. So this term is coming come from the shift shifting there because we have the t minus two, and the second term is more to the 
rectangle. So if you take the vertex of, of a rectangle, it will give you a sync signal, a uh, sync form formulation. And then we apply the property. So we have the HJ omega here, and the input is XT. XT can be expressed by uh, we can say three exponential term. We can up. We can simply apply the like the eigenfunction property. So the y t is equal to. We get the y over two r. So one multiply with the h zero plus e j pi over two. T multiply with the h pi over 2 plus e j 5 t multiply with h 5 okay and then uh, through the calculation we find that this is is this term is the h pi over 2 is 0 and we Get that the yt is equal to 4 plus 4 e minus j 10 sin 10 e j 5t. So we find that that term has a uh, is periodical and it has the period of t equals to pi 5. 2 pi over 5. So we find that the convolution of Lt convoluted with like the Ht is periodical. Okay. The C asks that is it possible that convolution of two aperodical signal is periodical? So here we see that like the uh, so from the question A, sub question A and sub question B, we see that XT is a periodical and the HT, I mean HT is a rectangle. So XT is a periodical and the HT is a rectangle is also a periodical. And the convolution of these two will be a periodical signal. So it's possible. That two apparatus signal, a combination of two apparatus signal will be a periodical signal. Okay. The first que the first question is about the sampling and it's related to the question five in the homework. So we say that uh, Fs is the next sampling next rate of the xt, and Fs is two b. We can see that uh, the x two uh x two t. Like the inspiration form is uh, is shifted version of the version of of, of x two t. So it's uh like the its uh, its frequency spectrum would be similar to the. X two T. So this but it's otherwise will be the same to the X two T. So if you do the X two T it means that it's the signal is uh, 
and we find that the signal is uh, like the is expanded in the frequency domain, so that as the new next rate would be q to b. 2 over the 2 of the, uh, like 2 fourths of the previous and there will be 2 fs now so this is for question a for the question b if we have the convolution of the two signal like two convolution of the xt with itself in frequency domain it will be modification of the 2 xj omega So the highest frequency component in this new signal, you can see that it is the same as the previous XT. Uh, so therefore, this next rate is still the FS. So uh, maybe I can add the sub question C. So what if we have like the x3t and the xt. So this addition, I have two signals. So uh, here I just uh, say that in such case, you need to consider that uh, so uh, the, how the highest frequency is uh, dependent. So the highest frequency is depends on x3t or uh, it's from the highest highest frequency component is from the x3t or x1t. So if it comes from the three t, x3t, so this means that the bandwidth will, I mean the next rate uh, will be dependent on the x3t or it will be dependent on the xt. Yeah. So this is general thinking to solve this. Question. This kind of question, like C, like question C. <coughs> okay. The last is about the sampling. So here, oh, the last is about modulation. It's related to question four. Uh, imagine that you, <coughs> so in the class. <coughs> We use the cosine signal uh, in the receiver side <coughs> as a demodulator, right? Uh, it, uh, as a modulator, we use the cosine signal as a modulator. Um, cosine signal is a periodic signal, right? But uh, not only cosine can be used uh, as a modulator, other prior periodic signal can also be used as a modulator, as a modulating signal. Here we give an example of FT. So we use the uh, this is square, square wave as another modulation function. And uh, So here it asks uh, us to show that if this system is equivalent to the cosine modulator, except for a scale factor. <coughs> okay, here we will quickly go through this, the solution of this question, and uh, I will give the solution in, in the below. So here, like the the FT is um, <coughs> is a square wave, and uh, it can be expressed in the Fourier series as FT is equal to the summation of dn multiplied with e exponential j and omega zero t.
Now we take the free transform of the xp. It will give you the fj omega here. And uh, when we module, when we like some, we multiply the F ft with the mt as show below, as show above. We mod multiply the ft with mt and then do the the spectral after the modulator is just a full transform of this mod modification. And we can see that uh, if we modificate the like the first transform of a modification is uh, will come to the convolution of uh, like the, of the uh, first transform correspondingly. So the convolution of mj omega with the fj omega. And the fj omega, because uh, like I said, you see that we can see that fj omega uh, actually it, uh, it's very similar. It can be seen as an impulse chain in the frequency domain, and it comes with the mj omega. So, uh, like similarly, similarly, it should still shift the mj omega to like the to numerous uh to uh, numerous like the uh, positions which centered as the n omega zero so this means that the the mj omega will be modulated to different frequency regions uh and we know that it will consist it this will contain the replicates of the mg omega center as m n zero and it show below. And we can see that if it is a if we currently consider these two terms, it's very similar to the cosine. If we cosine, if we multiply the mt with the, the cosine omega zero t, it will be here, and. Uh, Present to the omega zero t and now, but uh, but the, uh, the only difference is that when we multiply this with uh, uh, with the like the with the square wave, it will lead to, this will make the mg omega to be shifted by like uh, into numerals. Uh, frequency uh, point. Uh, if you multiply with the cosine uh, like the two omega t, it will only shift the signal of of j omega, mj omega into two positions. So I think that's the key difference. But, but like the the modulation ability is the same is the same. Uh, last uh, like the procedure is just uh, to uh do the like the apply the find wise and then you can demodulate the signal like the the mg omega okay uh so so these five questions is what we discuss for talk about the in this discussion week eight and if you have any questions in the homework or the contents in this video, just feel free to ask us during the office hours and the private discussion time. We are we will be there to answer your questions. Thanks.